going to give you an update on the beautiful bliss and the wonderful Dawn who's rescued him. If you saw my last video, then you'll know that he was being put to sleep because he's got a bit of a tendon issue. And Dawn said that she would take him on and I went and collected him. And it was something like a 180 mile round trip and then we broke down and it was a disaster if you haven't seen that video then you need to go and see it because yeah it really was something else well today bliss is being visited by the amazing donna cooksey now donna cooksey is a professional equine massage therapist and she's absolutely amazing if she can't fix it then my word there's a problem She's coming to give Bliss the once over and she'll probably have to come on a regular basis just to make sure that everything is going fine. I'm quite interested to see what she's going to say about him actually and see what she finds because she always finds something that you would never even think of. She is amazing. That one sounds nice. Me and Bruce also went down to Romsley Country Store and got a few of the little lickets because I'd found a really fun little licket holder on the back of the lorry and I thought it might be nice for Bliss to have that in the stable with him. It was really easy to put on the wall. It's literally four screws. But I don't think he'd ever actually seen anything like that before, so that was new for him. And I'm glad to report that he actually really likes it and has eaten quite a bit of it now so far. He's here, here. Here. Mmm. Is that nice? <laughs> oh, you're funny. Is that nice? And by some amazing coincidence, Jake, who is the regular farrier on the yard, just happened to be around the following morning and had a really good look at his feet. Bliss does have pads on his feet, which apparently were on the majority of the horses at the racing yard and are put on there for balance. Okay. Dawn was looking to transition Bliss to being barefoot, being as he's going to be on box rest until the spring. And this is what Jake had to say about that possibility. I would say you'd probably struggle barefoot with him. Um, looking at his feet, they're obviously typical thoroughbred, quite flat feet. He's got pads on with a slight graduation. So all they are, basically, the flat pad protects the sole and it picks the back of the heel up a little bit, stopping breaking his hoof pads and axes his back. It pops him up into the right angle where he should be. If you take him off, it'll be a bit like you walk around in your heels all day and then you take him off and go, oh, it, you feel that difference. It'll be like that for him. And obviously the pad protects the sole. So to me, without knowing the horse, I'd say he's obviously got thin soles, feels his feet. That's nine times out of ten why they put them on. Right. So it's one of them. They're not ideal for being out in fields of mud and everything. Usually they're for horses that stay in the stable because obviously the mud gets under it. Then you have thrush and other infections start because it harbors the mud under the under the pad. So it's a bit of a tricky one, really. Um, going to be on box rest till about spring. If he, oh, if he's on box rest, then you'd probably yeah. find take him off and be, if he's in the stable, that would be yeah, fine. He seems nice and relaxed, doesn't he? Hopefully, yeah. Uh, anything that could get that hand off. <laughs> I might have something what a legend. <laughs> I absolutely hate buckets with handles on. They are so dangerous. So Jake even managed to remove the handle brilliant. off <laughs> Dawn's lovely oh, no purple bucket. Any issues, give me a call. I'd say in the next like couple of weeks you probably do with having them off just because yeah. they're nailed really, really low. Oh, that. They're nailed really, really low. See how when it comes down, and you ideally want the hoop wall in a straight line. So his feet come down, they like drop off at a different angle, especially yeah. on the inside here. And like here, it comes down there and then it goes like uh, to the shoe. It looks like he's had them on and he had it fast back to the shoe. Um, so ideally you could let it, like do a take him on, just let his feet relax out, let it grow a little bit. Yeah. Thank you. No worries, see you later. Bye. So that brings us full circle back to today and the amazing visit from Donna Cooksey. I think you're going to find this quite interesting because I know that I did. 
hate the race too well. You know, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> right then. As soon as I go towards his ears, he's showing tension, obviously, so it might be that this pulp. But also, he's grinding a little bit, so it might be the high order, obviously, because 15 months of age, so they're bitted, aren't they? Yeah. They're ridden. So, he's probably got a little bit of tension through his jaw. Which is really, really going in at the minute. You listen to him grinding. So his hyoid, so his top jaw and his lower jaw are restricted. So that can put t tension on the pole and the muscle, which is called the sternophallus, that attaches to the top of the pole and also attaches to the tongue and then it attaches to the sternum, so the chest bone. So if anywhere like that is restricted, then it'll stop forward motion then it'll hinder the hindquarters. He was a little bit antsy about touching his ears as well to begin with, which again, all the muscle structures around the pole from the ear, massive to muscle. Hi. He does. I know. Good boy. Oh, is that good? See the muscle twitching? Yeah. Good boy. So he's tight in his pectorals. See again, his deltoid's twitching. I can feel the muscle twitching in my hand. Good boy. See here. And because he's not got his foot quite on the ground as well, look. Good boy. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, so he's very tight through his pecs. You see his rib cage? He's unpalpating the muscles. Oh, is this nice? Good boy. Oh, straight the way. Yeah. Trying to be as nice as I can for you. I know. Look at how his back end's tucked in. It's okay. Yeah, I know. You're going to feel good afterwards, aren't you? Hi. I was you, Hi. <laughs> oh, oh. That good. Take it off for me. Do you massaging? You're massaging around the lymph nodes as well. So if there's any inflammation or anything like that, then the lymphatic drainage can ha can yeah. work. While he's got a bandage on, I don't want it to get restricted. So while it's um it's down. So you can see it slightly, but it's minimal, isn't it? He's not flinching, no. and, no and I'm putting pressure. There's only heat from where the bandage has been. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm putting pressure, you know how deep I go, um, and he's not showing any signs. You notice how now he's gone nice and soft. Yeah, he's not... Um, and all in his back end as well. Yeah, look, you can't see his ribs now. No. He's really relaxed now, so it's not probably not to hurt him so much now. He's relaxed through it. Boy. Oh, you're going to feel a million dollars. <laughs> you can pick this one up for me. So he's got pads on as well. Yeah. Let me tell you why. It's a slight wish. So just take it, check in the thoracic pedis and the cross is long and restored. So now to see if there's any flitching. There is a little bit, might be superficial. He's either been left out 
Well, he's not had his rug taken off for a while because he's very scabby. You can see him. You can see him? Yeah. Yeah. So, bat is fine. So, that was superficial, which is good. He doesn't seem as tense in the back end. No. It's all in the front, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, nothing through the glutes. Right. Let's see what we like on this side, shall we? I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, you're nuzzling. Good boy. There we go. Nice little bit of an ear twiggle. Locked off slightly. Let me just see. Good boy. Is that okay? Is that okay? Oh, 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 oh. oh, baby boy. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. You got him? Good boy. Yeah, so this is showing discomfort in the bed. <laughs> oh, dear me. That was a very painful one. Yes. So underneath the elbow, basically. Yeah. He's not lifting his legs now, so that's good. Right then, let's see if we can sort this bit out here, shall we? Still feel a little bit of tension. But nothing to cross his back on this side. You think he was holding all this area upright, tight? So we'll take a photo of him when we when I've done, when we go out, and we'll have a look at the difference. Yeah. Good boy. Yeah, yeah, which is good. Mm -hmm. Some horses you can go deep and they don't even they don't even stop eating, they don't do nothing. You know there's a problem, but they just don't give you any indications at all. But he's happy, he's relaxed, he's enjoying the, tr the treatment now, he knows it's not going to kill him. <laughs> and that's usually the case, they'll play up where they hurt. Yeah. They're telling you, they can't say, um, excuse me, you're going a little bit too deep there. It's either launch round, bite, or move away. If they're moving away, that's an indication that it's hurting. If they're coming towards you, they're helping you to release it. Oh, we're going to have this one then, are we? That's really good. That's right, Ava. That's why I usually do it from the opposite side. Good boy. Go keep moving it. Has to be done for ten minutes. You can't leave it in one place because it, it will burn. So basically, the waves penetrate deeper into the structures mm. and help the healing process. Good for arthritis. Um, anything like that. Obviously, if there's any broken skin or anything like that, then you don't really want to be using it.
So what Donna's using here is therapeutic ultrasound and it's a treatment that uses high frequency sound waves to produce thermal and non-thermal effects in mainly soft tissue structures such as muscles, tendons and ligaments with a view to assist with the healing and remodeling of injuries. When a tendon is injured, it will shorten or contract Therapeutic ultrasound can aid in the healing of a tendon injury by heating the affected tendon to 37 to 40 degrees Celsius. It could be a multitude of things that have caused this, you know, heavy ground, obviously being immature, um, feet. Yeah. Um, it could have even been because he's so tight through his shoulders and, that, and his, his front end. That could have caused this as well. Really? Yeah. Is this been caused or is it just a counteraction from because of him being so tight up up front? Yeah, hold on. Just walking round for a little bit. Just so that the um, toxins and that and the lactic acid are released from his body. You see that leg doesn't even look swollen from the front. No, it doesn't. I say just walk him round a couple of times. One more and then he can go in and be rubbed up and have his bandage back on. What do you suggest then going forward, Donna? Um, I don't usually come back in a fortnight, you know me. Yeah. But I think I'll come back in a fortnight, do yeah. some ultrasound on him again and make sure that he's really, really relaxed through those shoulders and his pectorals. So there you have it. That's this week's update on Bliss. Who would have thought that he had so many issues around his chest area? He did used to jump the hurdles, so you never know whether he could have crashed through one at some point. At least now he has his forever home with Dawn. Thank you so much for watching this video and subscribe so that you never miss an update again.